Hello and welcome to a n another wonderful video. Uh, this is a 1969 Johnson 115 horsepower outboard. Um, this is a electric hydro shift unit. Um, power head seized. Um, cobwebs everywhere. The thing's not really in great condition. Not horrible, but it's nearly not nice. So the original thought here was to try to figure out why the power head seized. Doesn't really matter. I don't have any plans on fixing this thing. This is just going to be a demonstration video. There's our power head, spider webs and all. This thing completely stuck. So that's pretty uncool. Uh, the rest of the stuff seems to be pretty okay. The you know, carburetor is open. They do their thing. This thing probably works. So really just the power head getting stuck. Don't know what happened. Water probably got in there or who knows, overheated maybe. I'll probably tear it apart and find out, but, yeah. So, if you're wondering about these things, wondering if you should buy one, most people will tell you no. And, I agree. They're not really that good. Um, the electric hydro shift to lower unit, yeah, parts are expensive. Tools aren't available to get in there and work on them correctly. They're different. It doesn't have any provisions on the power head here to add in a shift mechanism so you can't even you know upgrade to a low, newer lower unit it's it's got a funky ignition system which a lot of parts aren't even available for anymore so it's it's got problems left and right so this thing's a little junkier than i thought the carbs they're stuck they ain't moving uh choke it works so i'm uh taking that off in case i need it those are uh, kind of expensive we need to replace them uh ignition works so i'll be pulling that out of there flywheels I don't know, rusted. Yeah. So I don't really need that stupid thing either. Starter spins, but the uh, pinion here is completely seized in the shaft. So, for the most part, starter's junk. But I can uh, throw it in the scrap pile. Wiring still looks okay, so I'll be taking that off. But that's kind of all I'm really going to be doing with this thing. Also, I need to keep my uh, breathing to, in front of the camera down to a minimum. I kind of noticed that when I was doing the uh, lower unit video. So, yeah, let's take off what I can, but I'll film it, the theory here, somebody's trying to put theirs back together, we're trying to see how everything uh, attaches, and we just wants to see it before they dive into theirs, and you might find this decently helpful. Um, I'm trying to get the choke off, I don't know why this wire is so long, but it runs pretty much everywhere. We got two little terminals up the top. My big screwdriver won't fit in. So the voltage regulator is under the flywheel. Looks like it shares one of the same wires as the choke, so I might as well get that off now. Let me put a Phillips in here. I don't know how many screwdrivers I need for one engine, but apparently one more. And I don't know if okay, that's off. That's one way to do it. All right, I have a uh, impact wrench on a one and five sixteen socket. Oh, that came right off. Given how this looks, we may have a problem. Pull the flywheel the rest of the way. So, spray it down with some lubricant. And hope it comes off. So, you need to tap a uh, hole down there. Those holes inside the flywheel are pretty bad. 
I'll be using my uh, tap sockets for this and this guy right here. Don't necessarily need the tap sockets. It's nice and open so you can get in there with a uh, normal everyday little handle. So it was one screw was able to thread into that one, but the other ones just kind of got started and that was kind of the end of it. So when you're uh, working on this type of motor that uses a distributor cap on the flywheel, keep in mind that distributor cap costs more to replace than this flywheel does. So, well, I don't know, that's kind of a backward statement because you should do this to get the flywheel off, but you don't want to damage the flywheel because you need these holes to get it off. So, if something does happen, you do need to run some bigger, drill some screws inside of here, tap it off, drill some bigger holes, re-tap this for a larger size screw, go for it, because you can easily buy a new flywheel. You can't easily buy the ignition system underneath the flywheel. Don't go in there with a hammer, hammer this thing off. Take your time here. So, with holes accessible, should now be able to get our puller on. Got an impact wrench with a 7 8 socket. Set the Titan. We'll see if it comes off. Oh, it's moving. So that's good. But it is moving kind of sideways. This side pulled up, this side staying put. That's uh, not something you usually see. Usually they come up properly if they come up that far anyway. So that's kind of weird. But a little pry there and it seemed to do the trick. Now the other side's not moving. Weird. Oh, I'm done. But that's in the way. Yeah, maybe not. Oh, wait, you see the stator in this thing. Ooh. Looks good. on All right, ready? You think that works? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Look at the inside of the flywheel. Everything is beautiful too. Ooh, lovely. So the stator, it's got two wires coming out right here. Connect them.
remove the uh, Phillips on top of the stator. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was going to happen. These things are pretty tight. All right. So this screw broke my tool here. So this is a Craftsman. So, you know, go to Sears and get a new one. Nope, they don't carry these anymore. So that's out. But whatever. So using the backup version, which are equally as crappy, but have them. That one's still stuck. So there's a bunch of clamps I forgot about. Actually, yeah, yeah, I guess there is. The stator should come off though, by itself. I don't know why it's trying to pull this trigger cap with it. Probably because it's stuck. I can think of the rest of Nightmare. I can see a little gap where the uh, screws once were, so I'm putting a screwdriver in there to get it off. Stator. There we go. There's our stator ring. Now, in fairness, this might still work. You might be able to wire wheel it down, get the rust off, because this isn't what probably rusted. What probably rusted was the flywheel itself. No, that's probably not accurate either because the flywheel is all aluminum, except for the iron magnets inside. This thing looks like it's made of mostly iron and copper. So, yeah, this thing's probably screwed too. It doesn't matter. So, there is our distributor cap, and that is what we're after. Well, that's what we're trying to save, that's what I should say. So, it should lift off. Let's finish getting the wiring disconnected. There's your cap. Yeah, internally is not too bad, just needs to be cleaned. Yeah, looks good actually. Well, at this point, distributor off. Now remove the clips that hold the base on. For whatever reason, this one's not really wanting to come off. There we go. And I don't know where the other one went. Whatever. All right. So we got to pull this out. This rod held in everywhere apparently. Show you what I'm going to be doing. Pull it off right here since it's the easiest to get to it looks like. Actually wrong one. Pull this out. All right rod is off. I think that is the advanced lever. So now this thing can move freely. So I may have lost some footage here. Basically take the top of the distributor cap off. There's a wave washer inside, so don't lose that. 
this is my next problem. So, I don't want to see any jealous hater comments. Obviously not jealous, it's hater comments about what I'm about to do. Look how they show how to remove this in the manual. So, no, uh, no complaining here, all right? Oh, yeah, that thing ain't budging. Oh, look at that. Ah, I stand corrected, it is budging. Yeah, what a nightmare. Uh, there's a little pin right here. Pin aligns with that. So you're putting that back together, keep that in mind. I don't know if that thing comes out of there, but I'm going to find out. Yep. Now we can slide off our base plate thingy here. Should have pulled that out. I didn't. I'm done. And there's our assembly coming out. spring and that is it that is the base of our crankshaft right there so that's it for the ignition so that's how to do that one and get back in clean the crankshaft up first if it looks anything like mine yeah clean it um that's it for the ignition so i'll move on